uh, in ancient Athens, it was not just the philosophers, but also the statesmen who believed in the primacy of reason and the exposition of ideas and opinions which were required to acquire and express it. Pericles, in his great funeral oration for the dead of the Peloponnesian <coughs> War of 430 BC, arguably uh, a ruinous uh, uh, war that uh, um, took place uh, despite uh, rather than because of democracy, uh, in his oration, he spoke not just about power and public good, but also about the contribution of reason and debate to both. He said, uh, we reach decisions on public policy only after full discussion, believing that sound judgment, far from being impeded by debate, is arrived at only when full information is considered before a decision is made. He was also very clear about the role of participative citizenship in good government. Our government is called a democracy because power resides uh, not in a few people, but in the majority of our citizens. But every person has equal rights before the law. Prestige and respect are paid those who win them by their merits, regardless of their political, economic, or social status, and no one is deprived of making his contribution to the city's welfare. Uh, but crucially, he went much further in asserting that those who did not fulfill their obligations as citizens by immersing themselves in political life are socially useless. Indeed, our word idiot is derived from the Greek for someone who puts his self-interest before public service. For Pericles, idiotes is both a selfish and an ignorant person. Now you know, you understand why <laughs> idiocy is in the title. Oh, well, actually, that's one reason why idiocy might be in the title of uh, my lecture. He said, our private citizens, though occupied with their personal business, are still fair judges of public manners. Unlike people of other nations, Athenians regard those who take no part in civic duties, not as unambitious, but as useless. Crucially, the Athenians also believed that the right to free speech implicitly conferred, conferred a duty to the truth. They even had a word uh, for this obligation, pahesia. As the French theorist, uh, theorist Michel Foucault described it in his, lecture on, his lectures on fearless speech, pahesia is a verbal activity in which a speaker recognizes truth-telling as a duty to improve or help other people as well as himself. In pahesia, the speaker uses his freedom and chooses frankness instead of persuasion, truth instead of falsehood or silence, the risk of death instead of life and security, criticism instead of flattery, and moral duty instead of self-interest and moral apathy. And he looks quite pleased with himself. <laughs> but returning to Pericles, uh, the glorious Athenian citizenship of which he spoke, of course, excluded the majority of the population made up by women, slaves, and a very wide definition of foreigners. And we also recall that Socrates paid for his paesia with his life. But as I've argued, democracy is not so much an end as an endless means, and it is through the competition of ideas that we constantly redefine its principles and extend its boundaries. Uh, that process, it has to be said, can take us further from as well as closer to enlightenment. Some 350 years after Pericles, Cicero believed that politics was not so much about personal virtue as the protection of property. Uh, and his Roman values are perhaps more closely aligned to our societies than those of ancient Athens. So if Pericles walked among us today, would he consider us citizens or idiots? <laughs>